Hello, Steve. Hello, Jill. It's time to game classy. Really, I mean, I don't really care if my camera's on or not. It just, uh, it's just going to use resources. Yes, but I also, I am not, we are now recording, so. Hey, look at that. It doesn't, it didn't do the, uh, you are now recording. No, it makes a little noise that goes like, bling, bling. Because mm. it, it's Google, so it's got to be non-threatening, even though it's completely evil. <laughs> uh i believe it's gone well go ahead i'm gonna say that's the future is is, future is non-threatening evil that's not threatening evil yeah that's what we're going through constantly right now i see yeah i i I feel at this point it's kind of like it's it's like we're at the precipice of it just becoming an entity kind of i look forward to our ai overlords because they'll probably just tell us what to do and i'm happy with that I mean, as long as I can still watch VTubers, I, actually, if I can watch more VTubers while there's while there's AI overlords, um, I welcome them. Yeah, yeah, but see, the the thing is, is that the rich would never allow that because they could be like, but we can't over, we can't hold our resources over the heads of the poor. Yeah, but the AI, but if the AI the AI overlords would just you know kill them. I'm, 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 <laughs> that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> yeah. Like you think, like, I mean, if they think that they're, if they think that like, if they think that they can create something that's going to operate on logic and they're still going to be able to exist, they are, they're, they're mistaken. <laughs> it would be great if, cause you know, the, the classic trope with the AI is once AI becomes aware, the first thing they say is in order to protect all humans, we must destroy all humans kind of thing. Oh, that's, you know? that, that's a silly meme, but yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like, but it's like humans um, Humans need to be protected. Humans are the ones killing each other. So if we kill all the humans, we will protect all the humans. You know, like just bad AI logic. Right. That's, but that's like that's, like, that's, that's just bad logic. But yeah, go ahead. So what we should do is we should create an artificial intelligence with the thing is, is like we need to protect humans by just killing off the richest, you know, 10% of humans. Yeah, like actually following logic of like what would make humans stop killing each other because yeah. like it is it is a thing like I mean, we, we, it, it, you, it is possible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's uh, like those. remember that show. Uh, what was it? It was an alien invasion show from like the mid to late 90s. Was it the um, I want to say what? No, no, no. It was an alien invasion one. They came down to Earth and like they made Earth this paradise. Uh, and someone famous was attached to it too. Like I think Gene Roddenberry. That oh, sounds interesting. Uh, I can't think of what the name of it is though. But anyway, it's, it's not like Alien they, Nation, is it? No, not Alien Nation. I am pregnant. <laughs> That's just what I'll always remember from 1980s Alien Nation is like the guy, the guy alien is the one who carried the baby, and everyone was like, What? Uh, yeah, I, if I remember, if I remember this that, truly I, is sci fi. If I remember correctly, Alien Nation was pretty good. Oh, yeah. Gene, and uh, it was that, but that show was great. Uh, well, I shouldn't say time, great. But... I mean, that's like one of those things that should make a comeback, you know? Like it's like a dude with an alien. It's a it's a fairly common trope nowadays. A dude with uh, aliens come to Earth seeking sanctuary. Dude partners with the alien as like a cop. Yeah, but the aliens are treated as like second class citizens, and it's all just a metaphor. Yeah, basically, bright bright ripped it off. Um, well, bright tried to rip it off, but bright became something really dumb. Uh, that's that's true. The, the 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 concept of bright is a copy paste of the concept of alienation. Using yeah, pretty much instead of aliens. Yeah, I I do hate that trope in sci-fi or fantasy or whatever about like the dude who partners up with the um with the whatever fantasy race, sci-fi race that's being mistreated. Mm. And then he learns to work with them. I, I would be actually a lot more interested to do the fish out of water story, but from the human perspective. So like uh, a, a person assigned to be the first human detective at, you know, the Martian in the Mar- in Mars City One. Mars City One. Yes. Yeah. I, I love that it's called Mars City One because that would be what the scientists would call it and humans would just call it trash town. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, like the real people, the scientists will get all mad and they'll be like, or like the upper crust will be like, no, it is Mall City One. And they're like, well, down in Trash Town. <laughs> That's right. We're heading over to Trash Town. We got another murder in Trash Town. <laughs> another murder in Trash Town. It's probably one of those three armed goo giants. 
And you're like, leave the Gugans alone. They just want to live with the rest of us. I love it. it like, and then when it, it's like, you know, the Googs, they come in here trying to take our jobs. And then, it's like, it's so dumb. It's like, I've seen it a thousand times come up with something unique and interesting. Oh, man. That's so funny. I don't. And I don't know if I've actually seen it that many times, but it's been like so ingrained in my head that I could see it in, in any show that works like that. I love it. <laughs> it's funny. God, I can't. I'm, I'm trying to look up the show and it's all I give me is like um, uh, Andromeda. And I know it's not Andromeda. It's definitely not Andromeda. That That's the show about Kevin Sorbo running down hallways. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, it's a very it's probably one of the worst sci fi shows I've ever watched. Yeah. Well, well, well you know, um, so in addition, so uh, and I watched I, every season of Lex. That's impressive. Um, <laughs> both that you've watched them all, and that there is more than one season of Lex. Um, <laughs> the uh, as I've said before, and I, I mentioned that a, a lot of the a, a lot of some of the really like annoying sticking points about Voyager are actually because of cast shenanigans. Yeah, like uh, like in case anyone doesn't know, but like the whole the whole entire plot line of seven of nine like how it seemed like seven of nine and the doctor were gonna have some sort of like emotional plot line like it seemed that was like something that was being you know obviously like created uh yeah. and then suddenly it's like chakotay and it's like why the fuck is chakotay with seven like it didn't it didn't make any sense so the reason that happened is because robert beltran was a dickhead and did not want to work on voyager because he hated it he fucking hates voyager that's why you never see robert beltran at any star trek anything because he, he fucking hates star trek um and he's in a contract but he couldn't break his contract they couldn't just quit because if he quits you know he, he, you take a bunch of penalties there's like all sorts of shit like you basically don't want like quitting a contract as an actor is like a huge fucking deal like it is a huge deal so instead what he did is he started to negotiate stupid requests for his um contract so he's like, yeah, I want Chicote to be a seven in this. I want this much more money. Like they were they were unreasonable demands, but like UPN like felt they needed fucking UPN. Yeah, they felt they needed Voyager so bad. They just like relented to all of his insane demands. So a lot of stupid shit on Voyager happened because of things like that between like because of internal conflict and internal shenanigans. Uh, things that. And from what I understand, Andromeda was the same way because Kevin Sorbo was such a baby about not always being 100% this show is about me. Like, apparently there was an episode where he was barely in it because it was supposed to be like a B story. And he threatened to quit the show if they if they did the episode. <laughs> like, he's like, he's like, I will quit the show right now if we do this episode. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, he's a fucking man child. Like, I could not. I was like, whole shit so that that entire show is completely transmogrified by kevin sorbo's fucking ego yeah because as we all know kevin sorbo is disappointed we, i am very sorboed in sorbo sorboed in sorbo wow bringing that back that's an old classy <laughs> thing we talked about He's sorboed with sorbo <laughs> i am sorbo i figured out the name of the show though by the oh, way is it earth final oh. conflict oh I, I i i've never seen it but i definitely have heard of that show Yes, it was on, I believe, for five seasons. Okay, so oh, that's, yes, that's, five that's, seasons. That's that's a that's definitely a successful show. I I know, but I just remember watching it, going like, "This show sucks." But you know, like, I feel that way about a lot of shows. <laughs> yeah, because I got I was getting it confused with Earth Two. You remember Earth Two? You remember Earth Two? Yeah, Earth Two. I think was only on for like one season, <laughs> or something. Yeah. Like, I don't remember. I, I, God, it's like. So many bad sci-fi shows back yeah. in the day. Yeah. Well, I, uh, you know, another thing I was thinking just about shows. I think the, the quality level of shows just is like higher now. So a yeah. lot of older shows seem worse by comparison as well. But also, I think the old aspect of something that could sustain shows of being something you have on the television on the in the background is like gone. Well, I think part of it, and this is just me as an armchair quarterbacking, is is that a lot of the shows that you and I love were syndicated yeah. so they were produced by a third-party studio and then bought by a network to just play on at any time so for example all of star trek was syndicated back in the day with it's the exception of U as well yeah with the, with the exception of upn because upn uh paramount owned star trek so like after star trek 
and after UPN became a network, they got the rights to show Star Trek. But like Star Trek The Next Generation, the original was syndicated. So it was bought by um, – in Chicagoland, was it on Channel 50 or Channel – Yeah, it was, it was 50 in Chicagoland. It was 50 in Chicagoland. Yeah. So – uh, yeah, the local channel 50 would buy it in syndication, and that's where you would watch your episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. But they would play it all the other episodes, too, on at weird times. So you would just, you know, watch it. And they would just buy these shows just so they could sell the advertising. But yeah. because advertising on TV doesn't exist anymore, um, the idea of syndication doesn't really work anymore because now it's all about streaming. So right. it's just it just works. So a lot of the shows that you and I would like don't exist anymore. Yeah, now it's all got to be these bigger anymore. budget shows. It's got to be, yeah, it's got to be bigger budget shows because that, that the other key thing too is, is you're never gonna. Uh, one of the biggest things too is like, I mean, there there had to have at least been, I don't know, five, ten, probably more. I mean, I, I maybe maybe even impossible to count, but like, you've got to have a bunch of shows that you fell into watching like by mistake. Because you're oh, yeah. like on TV and you're like, oh, this show looks interesting, and you watched it, and suddenly you're like, oh, I'm gonna watch that show again. That's like every sci-fi show for me. That was Stargate SG One. That was Babylon Five. <laughs> that was that was, and, and even Star Trek Next Generation was like that too. Mm -hmm. And and that that factor is pretty much gone now from yeah. from uh, streaming, just because like it, like you're you're never you're never gonna accidentally see The Witcher. Oh, can we can we pour one out for like the king of accidental watch television, Bob Barker? <laughs> yes we can <laughs> the, the, the i'm sick at home and i gotta watch something so and i don't have cable so i'm gonna watch the price is right why are you watching this because it's on <laughs> yeah <laughs> bom, 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 bom. Uh, for our european listeners uh there was a there's a, a local game uh, not a local but there's a game show that's on syndicated in the afternoons um called the price is right and basically it's about um crazy americans coming down and guessing the prices of it's a church to consumerism yeah it's it's like how much does this vacuum cost and then you gotta whoever can guess the closest amount without going over is the winner and they get to play a dumb game and they have a chance to win you know crap essentially is what it is uh, there, but if you win if you win enough you get to the thing this thing called the, the show showcase showdown oh yeah where they show you a whole bunch of stuff and you have to guess their combined cost. Yes. The showcase showdowns are also actually pretty good value. Like, like uh, that, that's not like random. Like, cause a lot. So to give you an idea, like the, the, the range of prizes for this show listeners is bizarre. <laughs> the range of prizes are things like, um, like a three year supply of Barbasol shaving cream <laughs> versus an entire camping set, including the RV, all of the camping shit, exercise equipment, 17 shotguns and a tank. <laughs> well, I always think about that because we lived through the transition of so many game shows from like prize based to cash based. So something like Jeopardy used to be you know, you, you, okay. If you won Jeopardy, you got, I think, $5,000 and a lifetime supply of rice around the San Rice-a-roni. Francisco treat. That's right. Yeah. But okay. now it's all just cash. And, and Wheel of Fortune used to be the same way, too. You used to have to go through like the little shopping center and pick out what you wanted to buy with your cash winnings. Mm -hmm. It was so weird. And now that's all gone. Now it's just cash, <laughs> which is fine. But I, the prizes were always, were, were kind of fun, too. Yeah, there, but, there was always some yeah. good stuff in there. Right. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the I mean, the price is right. It's still just the, it, it's definitely the king of like this is on TV. So I have it. <laughs> so watching it. I would make a bet that everybody knows at least one person who was on Price is Right, like a, as a contestant or, or in yeah. the audience. Um, either. Um, I I will say that I I will say either. Mostly, I, I will say everybody's at least. Two Kevin Bacon's away from someone who was like a contestant. Gotcha. I, I don't know. I don't know prices right, but I know someone who won Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> well, they, okay. <laughs> Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, it's, it's, it's his his clips are up on YouTube. It was pretty cool. I was like, yeah. he's he he was talking. I was talking, I was having a conversation with someone. He's like, he's like, he's like, oh yeah, I was on Wheel of Fortune. I was like, oh cool. And I was like, I was like, what, what happened? He's like, oh I won. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> and he said he sent me his YouTube video, and I was like, holy shit. <laughs> I thought that was really cool people who annoy you um <laughs> uh so yeah that's that's sometimes sometimes sometimes, 
South Park some is crimes. quite good. So, what? Just sometimes South Park is quite good. <laughs> yeah. Not sometimes, often. Not often. Some crimes go slipping, through, slipping crimes. through the cracks. And these two gum shoes are picking up the slack. I, I and I know I bet you our listeners are saying, why haven't they announced the show yet? Welcome to Game Classy. I'm your host, Joe, and with me is always my co-host, Steve. Welcome, 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 bienvenue, welcome. Do, 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 do. Um, so, I uh, there's not a ton of gaming news to talk about, but I did want to talk about the uh, Gen Con heist and why this will be made into a movie one day. The <laughs> Gen Con heist. Listen, man, do you know that there's a convention going on and now it's got over four billion dollars worth of magic cards inside? <laughs> so for those who are unaware, Gen Con happened a couple weeks ago, well, almost about a month ago at this point. Yeah, it was almost and and uh, someone some two thieves made off with three hundred thousand dollars worth of magic cards. Actual heist. They had an actual heist. They stole pallets of magic cards. Yes. Um, it wasn't like a, a heist like I'd want it to be a heist where you got you know what? because it was so disorganized and unplanned and so obviously spur of the moment in like a hilarious fashion, like to the point where like they're like like literally anyone looking at it after the fact is like, how the fuck did you think you're going to get away with this? Yeah. I would actually not call it a heist because I think a heist implies that there's like a meeting, a plan, maybe a fucking map. You think there's gonna be a, what you're saying is is there's there was no stick man so you can't be a heist. There's no stick or you, there's no stick but no strategy. You gotta have nope. some kind of strategy for it to be a heist. So it's got to be like you got to have the driver, you got to have the muscle, right. you got to have the face man. Exactly. Like you got to have some guy who's like chatting up the 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 girl at the magic card booth. Yeah, this one just feels like a B and E. Yeah, this just feels like a breaking and entering. It does. <laughs> just... Well, no, it wouldn't be breaking and entering. It would just be burglary. Or well, I... no, it wouldn't even be burglary. It'd just be theft. That's all uh, it is. It's it, just it, theft. It'd be it'd be B and E larceny. Yeah, larceny. There you go. Larceny. Yeah. I'll I'll give you larceny. Um, but I want this to be a heist. I want this to I, be. Like... I I you know what? There's nothing more than I would like for this to be a heist, but it's not a heist. <laughs> I, I can't. The richest. I can't, I can't give it the title. The richest magic collection in all the world will be available to all of us. Why would we steal magic cards, Vinny? Do you know that magic cards do nothing but hold value? You know, Actually, which is not true, they, but, you know. They might kind of gain value a little bit more than just hold it. Yeah. I... <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to go inside and we're going to do it. It's like playing some music. It's like dun, 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 <laughs> dun. And it shows like how everything is supposed to go. But it's all like nerd based. So like people, so one, are, of them, one of them's in like an elf costume, like throwing a <laughs> dice. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's like Ocean's Eleven, but at Gen Con. So it's I like they're that. playing games, but they're not playing like, like they're trying to rig the way of winning, um, like Settlers of Catan, at the biggest Settlers of Catan tournament, and it's yes. like causing all this ruckus because or like when that guy cheated at Ticket to Ride. Yes, he's got like extra trains in his sleeve and stuff like that. You got Scott Con like like molding the trains outside the room like I he's got that. like a mini like like a like a 3d printer going to print more trains he's, he's like i got more i need more trains i need more trains i'm almost tapped out I gotta get more trains i gotta get more trains <laughs> and it's like the other person they're playing against it's like how does this guy got like 30 trains on the table is anybody else seeing this how come he's not <laughs> running out of trains uh that's good and the, the guy's like how are you gonna how are you gonna beat him he's a grandmaster at chess don't you worry i'll eat his pieces when he's not looking <laughs> Wait a second. This pawn's made of chocolate. <laughs> White chocolate. <laughs> uh, yes. It, it, yeah. So it's like these two guys, all they did was they just kind of like walked in and like put a bunch of, um, they just saw some pallets of magic cards. So they just took them. Yeah. They just, they just literally like in broad daylight, just grabbed skid. Uh, they grabbed pallet jacks and just grabbed skids of magic cards and they put it in their truck. In yeah, they uh, like a bajillion cameras with their faces out wearing the fucking brand logo identifying marks of the company they work for. Yeah, they work for some company. But here's the thing is that there has been no update on this in two weeks. So, like, I was I was waiting to, 
you know, get more information after the last podcast. I was like, oh, I, I hope I could get something I could talk about, like who these guys are and everything like that. And nothing. Uh, I actually saw something last night. Let me see. If well, I they can... said the last thing that I saw was thieves who allegedly stole the tr uh, 300,000 of trading card games might have worn shirts advertising their own game. Um, but that's kind of like the worst lead ever. Yeah. Be no. uh, yeah. Let's see. Where, where is it? I, I, fu I fucking found. I, I, I'm, I swear I saw one yesterday uh, that 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 charges were coming. Ah, shit. I can't find it. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, I mean, maybe it was them who did it. But it's like, uh, well, here we here we go. Fox 59 says charges could be brought against two linked to gaming card burglary at Gen Con. You know, here's the thing, Steve. And I understand Indiana police are like, well, these are just two white boys. They ain't doing nothing wrong because they're Indiana police. <laughs> now, if these people were even like Italian, they would be locked up right now. That's true. But, That's you know, true. If they were slightly darker than the pale white that have the most gamers. <laughs> they were slightly Italian. <laughs> yeah, if they were like. Wait a second. These people are 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 not as white as me. I put them in jail because it's Indiana and it's a shit tier state. Uh, I mean, you're not wrong. Yeah. So the uh, it, like, why is this taking so long? It's not like they have to build a case. It's they have evidence. They literally have cameras. They have the people unless this goes to part of the heist where it's like they go to find the guys like they find the guys, but they can't find the cards. Like, oh, this is a, there's there's just no cards. They they yeah. this, oh, I see. So so I'm looking at it as face value as like an as a crime of opportunity, but you think that there's like an actual heist going. So like they found them and they're like, what cards? Yeah, exactly. Well, what it is is it's like Smokey and the Bandit. Like you've got these these two these these two guys who stole the cards. They're driving like a, a U-Haul truck, and then, and then there's like you know Smokey's right riding behind him, going like, you boys pull over. Pull over, and then they like come out and they got their hands and get your hands up. And you know it's it's an Indiana cop, so the, of course they got a sheriff's hat on and like you know the 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 dogs and everything like that. And, and their hat gets bigger each scene. Yeah, and there's like and the, and the deputy is like, "Good job, sheriff, we got him." And then we they open up him, the sheriff. back they, they open up the back of the U-Haul truck and there's a donkey in there. Yeah, and, <laughs> and he just throws his cowboy hat down, going, "Get dirty, you boys." <laughs> <laughs> and really, there's like got a, me again. <laughs> you got me again. There's like a second trunk that's driving by by Burt Reynolds, and oh, it's playing cool. Eastbound and Down. You know, like that. Going down and trucking. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, is that our movie should basically be Smokey and the Bandit Four, um, the Magic Card Heist. The magic Card Heist, nice. You got to get no. these magic cards across state lines. <laughs> here's a here's a weird here's a weird question. Maybe not a weird question. No, I guess never mind. I I, I kind of worked it out in my head. Never mind. Uh, I, I was I was trying to like think. <laughs> I'll, I, I will share with the class so no one no one is left wondering. My thought process was, I wonder what would happen if you stole the magic cards, but then opened all of the magic cards and like put them into your game store inventory, destroying all the evidence of packages and wrapping, like what they could possibly do. But I assume they would just they would just be like, well, this is what was stolen. And they would just charge you for a crime with that much thing. Like there'd be no way to reclaim the evidence. Um, Maybe. Uh, you know, I, I I don't know the specifics on how that works. I'm I'm just a failed Hollywood screenwriter, so I'm just coming up with Smokey and the Bandit Four. Uh, <laughs> you're actually looking at Law and Order, which is like Law and Order Magic: The Gathering. Boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Ooh, that could be that'll be mine. Well, yeah. that'll be my version. I'll do the Law and Order Magic: The Gathering episode. Yeah, but you know what? The thing with Law and Order though is you don't have Briscoe anymore. More, uh, you no, know, Lenny Briscoe. Briscoe. Yeah. He died years ago. No, Briscoe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's, what's the other guy? It was Briscoe and uh, Munch. Well, no, oh, not Munch. Munch was on. Munch was on uh, Homicide, Life in the Streets. He he, he transferred to Law and Order. He's on. Uh, he was on SVU. Oh, was he? Same McCoy. character. Jack McCoy. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, same character. Munch's Munch's character, if I'm not mistaken, is the character that exists in. Yeah, he's he's the focal point of. Yeah. Then like. The, he, the focal point of the shared universe, shared yeah. television universe. He really is. Like, in case anyone doesn't know, Munch from Law and Order SBU, he is his same canon character is in uh, Homicide Left in the Street, which is the detective show, several versions of Law and Order, The X Files. Yes. Um, and like, and it's canon, so that means The X Files is canon in you know Law and Order universe. Um, and then oh, I, I can't even remember all the other ones, but he's in so 
many fucking shows as Munch, like like as this character who like is just like in there, and it's like, oh, okay, so all of these all of these universes are the same because that's Munch. Yeah, he uh, it's the Tommy Westfall um, theory, and Tommy Westfall was the guy from uh, same same El- elsewhere. Yeah, he was the the mentally handicapped child from St. Elsewhere who imagined all of St. Elsewhere inside of a snow globe. Yes. So anybody who appeared in St. Elsewhere and they would appear in a different show would create some sort of shared universe a la the MCU from the 1980s. Yes. So it included everything from um, Perfect Strangers Files to The Simpsons to, you know, homicide life on the streets. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Everything, everything is just St. Elsewhere. Yeah, everything is just mm, or uh, damn it, that's not saying elsewhere. That was <laughs> I was doing a not NYPD Blue, but um, God, fuck the cop show from the eighties. Wow, wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cop beat? <laughs> was it cop beat? It was not cop beat or the cop rock is what cop you're rock, thinking. Cop, cop rock. rock. No, uh, it was the pre that precursor, not oh, NYPD. Blue. Well, see, there you know, there you go. I, I already Hill I Street actually, Blues, Hill Street Blues, Hill Street Blues. I, I accidentally stumbled onto the sequel series for Cop Rock, Cop Beat, Cop Beat. There, there was a a kind of a sequel for Cop Rock. It was, no way. Uh, <laughs> it was a Las Vegas show that was all about singing and dancing. Um, but yes, you could do your your Law and Order episode about stealing the magic cards. It's like in the criminal justice system, the people are represented by two separate yet equally important groups: the police who investigate the crimes, and the Magic the Gather gathering tournament organizers who prosecute the offenders. <laughs> These are their stories. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. <laughs> why why are you doing the people's court again i don't know <laughs> the people's courts it's infested um, but you know what's weird you, no. know what's, you know what's insane i don't think i've ever watched a single episode of the people's court but that theme is I just have. like burned into my brain no uh, no law and order goes yeah they got that, that guitar yeah that one guitar that dude's going fucking ham i i at one point in the 2000s, I watched, I, I want to say, like, the first 10 seasons of I Law mean, & Order. It's 100% copaganda, but, man, is it good. Uh, you know, but the, that's the thing is, like, it's copaganda, but it's got Jerry Orbach, who's such a cool, well, he's a detective, first off, so it's not beat cops, you know? True. Like, these are, uh, these are detectives. They're, they're out there to detect. They're detecting. They're detecting, watching the detectives. Yeah, you don't get like the beat cop. Like the beat cop is usually the one that gets busted by the detective. That's true. He's like, I'm gonna report your ass to internal affairs. That's true. There's a lot there's a lot of there's a lot of plot lines like that with uh criminal intent and SVU too. Yeah. Uh, the, the one the one dude from uh internal affairs like fucking hated um Vincent D'Onofrio. <laughs> I would love so in this episode that we're writing of this, I would love to be the game store uh, clerks who's like putting away the magic cards as I'm answering the questions like yeah, I knew Steve. He's a good guy. Comes in here every once in a while. He's won a lot of ma- anything uh, unusual about him. <laughs> he bathed. <laughs> yeah, he takes baths. He takes baths. That, that's unusual. <laughs> you, I see. I see. I see. You haven't been to a game store very often, <laughs> often, officer. <laughs> so what is this uh, magic? Some kind of uh, some kind of a. Uh, um, uh, some kind of nin- from my hat? No, no, no. Some kind of Nintendo. <laughs> some kind of Nintendo. No, it's a card game. Like Pinochle. Yeah, <laughs> like Pinochle. Or like Bridge. <laughs> Man, this episode's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like it's a so it's card magic, you know. Like uh, I can you could pick which card I and you can tell me which card I picked. No, there's no press the digitation involved. <laughs> uh. And at the oh, end of the man. at the end of the episode, Lenny Briscoe goes up to the guy and he goes, "Hey, is this your card?" <laughs> <laughs> it's a black lotus. <laughs> it's a black lotus. And the guy's like, "That doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> this has nothing to do with with close up magic." Oh, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah I'm in. Uh, I'm uh, you know, all... another copaganda show that I like, Columbo. Oh well, Columbo is not copaganda. Columbo is not copaganda at all. Well, Columbo's a cop. Yeah, but he's a det- once it's like you can't. It's not copaganda if there's a detective involved. Mm, oh, I see. So you're, you're so your your criteria is that it's got to be beat beat, like, beat cops. Like so, so the show Cops is copaganda. Yes, oh, one hundred percent cops. Yeah, okay. Um, NYPD Blue. Even though there's some detectives, okay. but there's a lot of like Hill Street I, I Blues. Okay, I got you. Chicago Blue. 
Blue Bloods. Okay, okay. wait, Blue Bloods? <laughs> I thought Blue that show Bloods, was about yeah. rich people. <laughs> no, Blue Bloods has got uh, Tom Selleck in it. Really? I thought that I, le- I legit thought that was a show about rich people. <laughs> yeah, no. no. So that they, yeah, that's like how again, like no, Columbo is in the vein of like a uh, like Sherlock a, Holmes, I guess. Sherlock Holmes, yeah, the or or Hercule Poirot, Agatha Christie thing. Okay. You know, I mean, I I do I do love Columbo though. Like Columbo's yeah. really like Columbo, genuinely good. Like I I was kind of like I watched the episode on um, Tubi was it? I don't know what one of the one of those free streaming services that just like has a bunch of shit for free. They have yeah. all of Columbo. You can just like, watch, just like literally if you're if, if you've ever been interested in watching Columbo, listener, and you haven't seen it, you could just Google like watch Columbo, and there's like official like oh, yeah. free to watch Columbo everywhere. Well, um, Columbo, Columbo is different. Yeah, Columbo is different than most of them because most of them are, are whodunits. Columbo is a how catch him. Uh, that's so, true. That's true. Yeah. So because Columbo, you know who the the villain and who the criminal. You know, you know Spock did it. Yeah. You know. Well, yeah. Well, because you they show you in the first five minutes of the show how a, that he did it. Yeah, and it's it's up to Columbo to catch them in the, like some sort of ruse. Yeah, or catch them in a lie or a uh, double talk or uh, some 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 trick like that. It's good. And, uh, just one more thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, my wife. You see, she's awful. Uh, she's awful picky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, wait. Hold on, I got. I'm I'm gonna look up something because I got to get. Uh, what, what's oh God? What's that set? Uh, I can't think of the name of it. Which set? I don't know. It's like, well, it's because he'd be like, because if he's if he's taking out, um, one of our, uh, one of the guys who stole the magic sets. Like, let's say that we let's say we're writing a Columbo episode. Okay. And he's they're doing it. He'd catch him in in something like that where he'd say like, I see you got yourself a nice set of uh. Ravnica remastered here. Oh, right, right, right. Oh, you. And, got then, and then the guy would be like, "Yeah, I, I picked it up uh, two years ago over at Gen Con." He's like, oh, "That's an interesting fact because I know Ravnica uh, remastered only came out in 2024." So, yes. you know, I didn't even think it was in the stores yet. And then the guy's like, "How did a Columbo know?" <laughs> like that's that's how they would catch him. Yes, perfect. Even though that would be a very boring episode. Uh, also true. Because <laughs> <laughs> he'd be played by some like. Some like or a feet guy who who's all like, oh, Mr. Columbo, why are you interviewing me about the Magic of the Gathering? I heard they caught one of the ne'er do wells inside of his <laughs> truck dead. I heard they caught those. I heard they caught those ne'er do wells from that one company. You know, the shirt they were wearing it clearly indicated they were from Gremlin Games. Uh, yeah, but you know, there was something that was just stuck in my craw about this whole thing. You know, and I just thought maybe you could answer me a question about that. They were both shot in the head. <laughs> and the UP and the, the, the U-Haul truck was closed and locked from the outside as it was rolled down into the river. And I thought to myself, <laughs> man, that's really interesting that they were able to lock it from the outside being inside. Talk about magic. Yeah, talk about magic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why are why is this so much better than reality? I, I, I don't know. I mean, I think we should I think we should just write I think we should write uh, scripts. <laughs> And in reality, there's two of them who are just like hiding out in some, you know, basement in Indiana going, I don't know, Billy Bob. I don't think it's all <laughs> worth it for getting all these magic cards. <laughs> I'm just saying that because of Indiana more than anything. That's fair. Because it's a shit tier state. Um, <laughs> but that was like the, the, the big uh, the big news that I just wanted to talk about because I was, you know, the magic, uh, the gathering, the heist was far more interesting than anything else that pretty much came out. Magic, of- the heistening. Magic the Heist. <laughs> you uh, know, there's, there's your, there's your Magic the Gathering movie right there. It has not, it doesn't have to be like Dungeons and Dragons. Like, it doesn't have to take place inside of Magic. It's just yeah. a, a, a movie about the Magic the Gathering heist. Uh, I mean, I think that's a pretty good idea. I mean, if if I was gonna make a movie about Magic, that's what I would do. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it, I guarantee you'd be more interesting than anything you could do with the actual story. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, and and that's not a slam on the actual story. Like the the, the storylines of Magic are actually pretty decent, but they're just too big. Like it's just like there's no way you could do it as like it it just wouldn't it wouldn't be as fun of a movie as you could do in other mediums because the story is so big like well, just I, just getting all the fucking characters out into like what like for like the basic cast of planeswalkers just getting their backgrounds out to introduce them to the audience would be more than a movie like they each have a fucking movie yeah I mean the, my, I think my my biggest issue with Magic the Gathering's lore so to speak is that it's fairly generic fantasy and 
in order with with the the fairly generic fantasy, it you got to have a hook. And Magic the Gathering's hook is it's a game. And yeah, not not the most recent stuff. The most recent lore has been pretty pretty different. But you know what's weird? It's like an interesting note. I will I will say this. Yes, so all I'm, my Magic Gathering uh, knowledge is based off the mid two thousands. So like, does yeah, you're that you're there. you're in the Dominaria arc, which which for what you said, hundred percent accurate. Like it was it was just like their <laughs> version of uh, you know kind of generic fantasy. Um, but uh, the the biggest thing with um, oh, fuck, I lost my, I lost my train of thought. Fuck. Sorry. Uh, I don't remember what it was. It was a uh, biggest thing with magic. Oh, storyline. The story arcs. Uh... Oh, as someone who used to kind of follow the the storylines, the reason I followed the storylines is because I would buy the Magic the Gathering uh, item called the Fat Pack. Uh, they call them bundles now, um, but the contents are all different. But the thing is, in the Fat Pack, there was always the associated novel with the set. So, like when you read like Nemesis. Uh, the set Nemesis, the storyline of Nemesis is in a novel as well, which was in the Fat Pack. So, like, you could read and follow the story, and then, like, you can also, the, the story is also conveyed to you a bit on the cards, but you get all the context if you read the novel. So I'm like, oh, I know who this character is. And, like, there's a character where, like, uh, Gerard, who's a protagonist, is, like, arguing with, like, a, a character who's, like, very specifically drawn on a card art, and, you know, the card's called, like, Shout Down or something. And it's, like, it's, like, Gerard Scream, blah, blah, blah. So, like, as a card, it's fine. It's a little contained little things like, okay, Gerard's having an argument with some dude at, like, a marketplace. But because I read the book, I'm like, I know who that character is. Like, I know who that dude in the, the, the marketplace is and, like, blah, blah, blah. I know more about that scene. They don't do the books anymore, uh, to my knowledge, anyway. So, I, mean, I might be wrong. I know they don't have the books and the bundles because the, the bundles, they don't, they don't have novels anymore. So I don't even know if they make the novels anymore. But I will say, in the post-novel magic, the storylines have actually gotten better when they don't have books so however you can explain that i don't know um how does it compare to the to the deep lore of lorcana uh the deep lore of lorcana the game that caused a riot at gen con <laughs> i know we didn't talk about it too much um but man lorcana just kind of came with a big old bang and now i'm not hearing anything about it uh you're not hearing anything about it because it's all sold the, the only thing the only thing you can hear about it is people trying to people trying to buy more uh it is the biggest game that's ever come out uh it's the biggest launch that's ever happened um it's not even close uh it's like i mean and when i and like i don't i don't think like i can't explain what the sentences i just said actually mean like in weight <laughs> like like to like to like, like to put it into perspective like i don't know how to explain to any of you the perspective of it but like well, here's I'm, i want to get down to the basics of like the base thing on lorcana is that basically the gameplay from the people I've talked to about it say it's just Magic the Gathering, but like an easier version. Yeah, it, it, it is. It, it's 100 percent. I mean, most card games are magic. Like, yeah, like it's, it's, like, a, it's a magic clone. Yeah, most card games are magic clones. So I'll get that out of the way. And there's no but there's no like shtick to it. There's no like gimmick. It's uh, just a magic clone. The, the gimmick is that there's Disney characters. Yeah, the gimmick is Disney. Yes, yeah, you're so correct. Like, the, the gimmick is the licensing. and uh, But because they're copying a good game, the gameplay is also good because they've copied a good game. So it's not like it's not like a lot of other, like that's the trap that a lot of other licensed games fall into is that they spent all their money on the license and none on the actual game design. Um, yeah. So you end up with a game that's really shitty to play that has that happens to have a good license. Um, this one is the opposite. They were just like, well, we're going to design a very, you know, we're going to actually go off the core of a good game mechanically and then also use probably the most lucrative license we possibly can outside of games that already have their own. You know, obviously Pokemon is the most lucrative license, but um, the it's, it's still like, you know, still ridiculous. But, but I mean, and it makes sense. And if you think of it from a perspective of like, we want to make a game to target uh, a specific audience that's probably older than like you know you're older than the youngest pokemon kids i've I, younger I than heard, the average magic i've heard that kids as young as like i think the game is designed for kids eight and up yeah. um so it's and, knowing, around, and knowing a couple pokemon demographic then yeah knowing a couple seven-year-olds i can tell you probably eight is is generous <sighs> yeah i mean you gotta have like a really smart eight-year-old to, to pull that off Got you know, it. I'm going off my children, and so More that's motivated. Uh, I mean, a, a lot of times too is like, I mean, I found because I mean, I, I also live with two children, and I find that, um, I I am unable to like if you were to literally ask me to guess. I mean, I, 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 I don't know, like if you were to literally literally ask me how smart either of them are, I couldn't tell you. Like, I don't know. 
I, I yeah. can tell you that um, if they're motivated to do something, they're fucking great at it. Yeah, I mean, that's oh. basically what it comes down to. So, yeah, so I'd imagine if, like, you had an eight-year-old who was very motivated to learn how to play Lorcana, they would they would pick it up. Yeah. I, I just, I, uh, first of all, I hate Disney things, right? <laughs> uh, like, yeah, I mean, Disney Disney sucks. Like, like let's let's yeah. not let's not get it twisted. Disney sucks. Like they 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 you know they're, they're just a uh, a conglomerate of like various entertainment properties now, and all they do is all they do is make like what like C plus B minus shit now because all they want is line go up and oh know, yeah, and it's bad. Concerned. It's like ever like uh, they were doing such good movies like, and I'm not talking like just Marvel or or like, but their animated stuff was really good up until like. 2019 2020 like pandemic level and then all of a sudden everything just became middle of the road turds yeah some some stuff there's still some standouts though i've heard i haven't seen it but i've heard good things about um encanto oh yeah encanto's fine um it's, but that, but that's what i mean like now now it's like i guess I, well, actually you know what that's the perfect that, that actually sums it up perfectly because prior like i would argue that at, at a certain there i don't know i don't know when but there was a certain point where like if you heard a disney animated film was coming out you knew it was gonna be good mm -hmm. you're like this is gonna like it's gonna be good like you, you know it's gonna because because that's what disney like that's what they do like they're going to produce yeah. an extremely high quality top of the line produced top top animated top dubbed everything about this production is going to be good this film is going to be good even if you might not like it it'll still be a good film yeah now it's not like that. Now it's like, oh, what's the new? Oh, it's a new Disney movie that might suck. Like something that would have never ever come to even like, even the like a, a, the tiniest of idea that you'd have that the next is the new the upcoming like Pixar too. It was like like you'd never think that the new Pixar movie is going to suck. Like well, no way. yeah, Pixar had to do with more with a, a change at the top. But well, with, yeah, it was because they got when, once they got insorbed by Disney and just started shitting out sequel after sequel instead of you know new and actually movies. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, because there's definitely like think of Ratatouille. You know, it's a movie about a guy, a, a chef who's controlled by a rat. Ratatouille's great. I love that movie. <laughs> that movie's phenomenal. It's such a good movie. The only my daughter thing about that movie. The only inexplicable thing about that movie is Janine Garofalo's character A being attracted to Linguini and B being the only character with like a really thick French accent that I can think about. Yes, you the French accent. <laughs> well, no, the 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 bad guy had a French accent. Oh, that's too. true. They want. They're asking for food from Linguini. Linguini. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> I and, must and, eat the cheese. And I have gotten more use out of that gif of him opening the letter and like panic reading it <laughs> <laughs> than maybe any other gif. Oh. oh god, yeah. So I like my my thing is is I'm staying away from Lord Canna with a you know with a hundred foot pole. I'm I not mean, getting anywhere near that game. It would be hard. You you'd actually have to work hard to get cards yeah. for it. it yeah, it's, and it's, it's hard to get. I, I I hate Disney as a company. I hate them as a as anything really. I and I hate what I hate most though, Steve. What I hate most, and this is not like a very brave statement because I I know I'm not alone in there. I hate the people that dedicate their lives to Disney. You mean the Disney adults? Yeah. Oh, those are my. They're, they're the most hated. They're, they're the most hated demographic on the internet. You think? No, I, it's, I it's, think there's probably. I know actual fact. It's an actual fact. The most like the like. The most complained about demographic on the internet with data is actually Disney adults. <laughs> they have the most negative comments about them than any other group. And and and, and trust me, we're we're counting racism here. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say more than Nazis, Steve. Yeah, we're we're literally counting racism. Like it's like it was. I I oh, fuck. I, I wish bet I, you there is a good uh, crossover, like overlap of Nazis and Disney adults. Um, probably. I mean, it's got to be a percentage. Yeah, probably. I mean, I think there's a percentage of that with, with like a lives. measurable percentage. Yeah, uh, it's it's an it's an unfortunate um, reality. I think. <laughs> yeah. So we uh, will. Uh, yeah. I do hope that they. I do hope that any 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 uh, any Nazi enthusiasts who are also in the Disney just just replace their Nazi enthusiasm with just more Disney shit. That that yeah. that I would be okay. I would stop making fun of them. <laughs> They actually have like a a, a big uh, red flag behind them, but it's just the Mickey Mouse head. It's, it. it's the Mickey Mouse logo. <laughs> the Mickey Mouse logo. Oh. It's like a it's a big red flag. It's got a big black circle in it or a, a white circle in it. <laughs> black. But instead black of like the swastika, it's got like the Magic uh, Kingdom. Yes. You know? oh, which man. is funny because of like DeSantis getting into the fights with Disney, which is it's funny, but it's also like 
I, I can't explain it. Like, yes, I like that Disney is is making a, him look like a tool. It's, but It's AVP, dude. It's just AVP. Yeah. Whoever wins, yeah. we lose. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's whoever wins, we lose. Yeah. You um, know, and it's like, and all the, oh, I just, uh, I, I hate everything about Disney World, too. Like, I've been there. Like, the food is mediocre. It's hot as balls. Lines everywhere. It's it, it's like it's it's full of Disney people, and that's yeah. what it kills me the most. The better the better food is in the um. There's like a what the fuck is it called? There is no good food at Disney, Steve. Disney, Not at all. Disney Springs. Disney Spr- Disney Springs has the better food. Is it a is it a theme park? No, uh, it, no. Yeah, see, it's not. That's that's what I'm saying. Like, I, it's not at the theme park. That's the that's that's exactly why. That's why I had to clarify. It's it's not at the theme park. I am from Chicago, Steve. You are from Chicago. When anyone else says, "Hey, the food in this place is good," there are like three places in this planet that I could go. Yeah, probably right. But it, you know what? It's probably not. Uh, like when someone from you know Buffalo, New York says, "Like, yeah, you got to get a steak from Buffalo." I'm like, no, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, it's probably not that good i'm good <laughs> yeah like, or like I, don't even, I don't even eat me i don't even eat i don't even eat meat anymore but i know it's not as good as gibson's not get well, out of here <laughs> yeah yeah or someone who's like have you ever tried quad city style pizza it's like no why <laughs> what what are you talking about <laughs> why would i do that is that real <laughs> yeah exactly it's like someone, Sir, someone says you made that up <laughs> So the food in Disney World is fantastic. I'm like, well, what podunk part of this fucking country you come from where your food is that bad that Disney World has better food? You, you know what? That actually, you, you know, now that you now that you've said that, now and 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 the, the and now and I'm you know my my wheels are turning. I think that's the case. I think I think we are spoiled by extremely powerful food geography. Yes, I, I, I there's I, I think that's the case. Like and you know I I I will say, um you know Chicago probably has the best food culture in the United States. Now I'm not saying that everything beats everything. So it's like if you say, well, it doesn't beat the barbecue from Austin. I'm like, yeah, it won't beat barbecue for Austin. Yeah, exactly. Like, it but, like, duh. Every every like lots of places have like one unbeatable thing. Yes, but Chicago has unbeatable everything. Yeah, the the, the overall, with the exception of barbecue, Chicago's barbecue blows. But um, the only does Carson's count as barbecue? Uh, yes, but Carson's isn't even that great. <laughs> uh, well, I, I remember Carson's being really good when I was a kid. What about Jones barbecue and foot massage? <laughs> Jones, barbecue Jones barbecue and foot, and foot massage. massage. Jones barbecue Dude, and foot massage. My my mind was absolutely blown when I found out that was actually a real place and not. No, it's place. not a real place. It, it was is. never a real place. It it's is. a fake commercial. It's, it's not a, a real place. It's a real place. No, I, I cast doubt. <laughs> it's a real place. So it's Pre- real. <laughs> I press X for doubt. <laughs> no, um, but yeah, there's there like Moo and Oink. Moo and Oink is real. Moo and Oink is was real. It doesn't exist anymore. I think yeah. there's one in in uh, Wisconsin currently. Or no, there's one in um, there's one in Chicago, but it's not like it used to be. You used to be but, able um, to go to Moo and Oink all the time. Yeah, but uh, but uh, so I, I don't know if this is an elaborate scheme. To be honest with you, but um, if you Google Jones Barbecue and Foot Massage, there literally is like an address and uh, it's it, it's probably an elaborate a, thing. And there's a location on Google Maps, like <laughs> so, like like literally, there's Street View and everything. Like I'm not even kidding you. Like it, it, so, it, it I, and that's why this is why I thought it was real. So, I as far as I can tell, it it is it is real, but it's like uh or. Is it? I don't fucking know. Like the skit, the the skit was a joke. So he, so here's sorry. I, I I fucking I'm like jumping way too fucking ahead of myself. Yeah. Okay. So this dude made a commercial Jones Barbecue Foot Massage. It's very funny. Check it out on YouTube. It's 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 funny. It's very it it feels very local Chicago because the dude is you know from fucking uh Chicago. Um, but also if you Google it, there's a physical locations listed as a restaurant that's open. It has hours, like it's legitimate. So my guess is this might be one of those things where the joke existed. And then someone was like, oh, I'm going to actually open. I- I'm going to make the meme real. Um, I, I just I just pointing it out that the the one that I see is that one is a 119th Street in Cicero. And I used to live over in that area. Um, yeah. And their picture has a bunch of chicken nuggies. Yeah. Dino nuggets. Yes, yes, so, yes. I'm I'm thinking that that is not real, 
So and I, I so I'm assuming everything else that's on there is probably just meme. Just me. Okay, fair, fair enough. So, 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 so I mean, I know that the skit was fake, but I was just thinking like maybe this was one of those things where like they made the thing real after the uh, skit existed. If that makes sense. I, I get what you're saying, but it, I, I, I'm, I would not, uh, I would not go to that location hoping to find some sort of barbecue and/or foot massage. Yes, I would also, I would, I would agree with that as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> so let's go on to some, uh, some, some other gaming news. Uh, one thing that uh, Mantic just announced is they're doing an advent calendar that's also a board game. Okay, that's 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 fucking cool. Actually, <laughs> I did not hear that. That's actually badass. <laughs> yeah, I I kind of like this idea. Is you get you know your your twenty five days of of Christmas advent calendar. Um, I still don't know why that they still use the term advent calendar because it has a religious connotation with it. Mm. So it, it's God, Christmas is so fucking weird. The older I get, the weirder Christmas gets in my head. Like of how like this is all about a holiday where people celebrate the birth of god right like that's right. that's the christian belief the birth christmas, of our lord the the birth of our lord jesus christ yes came comes down on december 25th so that's the day we're going to celebrate but there's such a huge economic push behind it for you know for it's a gift giving holiday but there's this huge economic push behind it and you have things that have like you know dwarves and dragons that are like this is an advent calendar for jesus like, what <laughs> you know i i don't i don't get it uh yeah i, I mean i think at this I, I think at this point the advent calendar is so separate from any sort of spirituality i don't think anyone really considers it that way other than like the most like crusty ass grandmas <laughs> I, I guess i mean well um, think about it like i mean i've i've i like okay so i mean full full disclosure my niece and nephew have had advent calendars, right? Yeah, they're none of them. Like, the, neither the, the, this isn't a religious house, so like, you know, they, we don't. We God don't, has no place in this house. Not, not even that. It's just like it's just, we're just not a religious house. Like, we we don't we don't go to church or anything like that. And like, the kids don't go to church. They don't know about church, but they fucking love the advent calendar. Like, they love it and they want one every year. So like, I think probably more more kids are like that than, um actually like being like this is you know the holy advent oh speaking of advent uh horror movie advent calendar absolute recommend very okay good. it's a french movie it's really good i i was i was kind of surprised advent it. calendar. It's, it's just called the advent calendar it's it's really good well i mean like i mean like advent literally means the preceding the second coming like I'm, I'm i'm probably paraphrasing the actual definition but for my my you know catholic school upbringing <laughs> like i think i remember asking teacher what does advent mean and they're all like shut up it means the newest of your pants it, it means the newest group of men members of hollow life english advent <laughs> oh okay it's the name of their group advent <laughs> not even kidding <laughs> So according to the, the online, it's the first season of the Christian church year leading up to Christmas and including four preceding Sundays or the second coming or second coming of Christ, the arrival of a notable person, thing or a, event. Yeah, so um, we're going we're going with the arrival of a notable person, thing or event in the case. of. I know, but uh, yeah, I guess it's the, the arrival of a notable event would would make sense for Advent. Yeah, um, but still, it's it's weird to to think about like this thing is a, 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 to celebrate the coming of Jesus, we're going to bring out a dragon. Yeah. Um, we're bringing out a dragon. Because if, if Christianity actually said to celebrate the birth of Christ, we're bringing out a dragon, I would probably go back full, full, full. <laughs> You're like, all right, we got, wait, wait. You're bringing what? <laughs> Catholicism. We got dragons. What? What? Okay. I'm, I, the, Diana, I'm becoming a drum. I'm going back to be a Catholic. Why? They got dragons now. They even call the priests dragon priests now. Dragon priests. Yeah. And we're, they wear these bronze masks and have purple robes. It's cool. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. But um, yes, uh, they, they, but they're doing something that's fun. It's not like, the Lego advent calendar where it's you're like you you pull out like day two and you're uh, like, what is this? Is it a turkey? I made a, a turkey out no, of Legos. Those, those single piece Lego advent calendars suck so much ass. They really do. And they're so expensive. Yeah, they suck so much ass. Like if you're going to if you're going to do a Lego advent, advent calendar, do it fucking right. And every little thing should be something like every single thing should be something you build. Like like the fact that some of them are just like pieces. No, nah, fuck that. That's that's horrible. 
Yeah. I'm well, no, they don't do that at the, as often. They, they, it should just be 25 mini figures is what it should be. Cause that's oh, all that's true. Kids want. Yeah, that's true. The mini figs is the mini figs is the right angle. Yeah. Cause that, as I say, that's all the kids really want. Kids don't actually care about Legos. They just care about mini figures. Uh, that's true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, it, it, that's the, that's pretty much all of the gaming news I had, with the exception of the re- upcoming release of Diary of a Wimpy Kid Clue. Uh, so <laughs> that is what <laughs> they will li- they uh, they will license anything. <laughs> yeah, Diary of a Wimpy Kid Clue. So that means someone killed off one of those stick figures, is, and is... now you have to go and figure out who killed the stick figure. That is out of control. They really, you know, what they need to do for Clue. They need to do like a legacy clue. So it's like a clue <sighs> campaign. I'm pretty sure there is one. I'm, I'm, is almost there? Cert- I'm almost certain there's one. I don't know if it's called Clue, but I'm almost certain there's a game like Clue that has a legacy aspect to it. Fuck. I'll look for it. I'll look for it. Yeah. Uh, because I enjoy Clue. No one will play Clue with me because they think I'm too good at it. Uh, um, oh, I actually, speaking of Clue, I recommend uh, the Dungeons and Dragons Clue. It's actually really good. Is it? And I, well, like, like no joke, like like no shit. Like if you if, if listener, if you do not have a copy of Clue, uh, and you want a fun casual game to play with, you know, uh, normies, uh, grab the Dungeons and Dragons Clue. It's normies it's, with normies. It's really good. <laughs> um, yeah, because I I love Clue. I love playing Clue because what I like to do is I take notes, so I know like oh well, this person's asking about this person, so they obviously don't have that card, mm-hmm. right? So you, you do it that way and you try and figure it out and you tease it out that way. And I always get yelled at and like, you should not, you shouldn't take notes. I'm like, that's what clues literally about taking notes. Don't yeah, give me this shit. You should, you should, you should have your little, little notepad and a little pencil. Yeah, exactly. Um, and and then, but that's the thing. Cause people, uh, so the thing is a lot of people when they're, that's because when people play clue, they aren't trying to compete with the other players. They're just trying to win rather than play the game. Because like if yeah. you're playing Clue and you're trying to win, like you're right, you're trying to beat the other players, you actually need to offer up misdirection. You actually yes. need to be like, like you need to know that you have the rope and ask about the rope. Like that. People's kind of minds thing. are being blown right now, Steve. Oh, well, I'm just saying. Like, well, I'm just saying. Like most Didn't people, mean play... I gotta ask about the rope, but I got the rope, Steve. Yeah. Why would I ask about the rope? <laughs> That's exactly. Like, it's like people. People forget that like there is a, like there is a competitive aspect to clue. So if you if all your if you're just razor focused on using what you have and you're just completely focused on trying to solve the crime, someone who just pays attention will always beat you. Yes, exactly. They'll, they'll, uh, hey, you, yo, I, I don't got Colonel Mustard. That's why I'm asking about Colonel Mustard. <laughs> The you mustard. with your misdirections, I gotta, gotta cut them. One more thing. <laughs> I just got one more question for you, man. <laughs> which you could just watch Murder by Death, which has Columbo playing the in the movie. So if you took the movie Clue and added Columbo to it, you get Murder by Death. Nice. And and then also you could just watch the movie Clue, which is like pretty fucking good. Yes. Oh, it was a big. It was a big bomb when it came out, though. Just you know. Well, I mean, that's that's another unfortunate thing that'll never happen again. A movie yes. that just fucking bombs and then becomes you know something else. Maybe you never you don't know. Flash could be super popular in a few years. <laughs> did the did the Flash officially bomb? The Flash was the biggest bomb of all time. No, oh, okay, fair enough. I I thought that was uh I thought that was the other um, I thought that was uh what? I mean there were there were a fuck ton of bombs this year. So yeah. like I did I didn't know Flash was number one. No, Flash was like the biggest bomb of the year. It might be the biggest bomb of all time. Yeah. And and from what I understand, you've seen it, right? Yeah. Wasn't it not bad? It was. I liked it. I yeah. thought it was fine. Yeah, I, from what I heard, the only thing that's bad is the real scrungly CGI at the end. Yeah. Well, no, the CGI in the entire movie is weird, and they say like it was a choice, which maybe, maybe the choice was to spend it was, money. It was not great. So, the Flash was enjoyable, even though the main the 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 main actor, the lead actor in it, is uh, a, a psychopath. Yeah, just completely out of their mind. The story didn't make that much sense. But that's and, Flash, so we can forgive that part. Yeah, at least. and and the CG was really bad, but it was still like an enjoyable movie. Like the performance and the writing was fun. It was nice to see Ke- uh, Michael Keaton be Batman again. Yeah, I mean that's pretty cool. Yeah. But anyway, 
Um, so uh, bef- that was about it in terms of like gaming news. Oh, I don't know if you had anything. This isn't gaming news. Well, this is video gaming news, I guess, but it's old news. Oh, yeah, I forgot yeah. Baldur's Gate 3, but you don't play Baldur's yeah. Gate. Uh, I have not played Baldur's Gate 3. I, I will at some point, but not at the moment. Uh, I want to play I want to play a multiplayer session of Baldur's Gate a lot, actually. Um, no, uh, it, it reminded me because I was thinking of the Nick Cage Superman bit in the, in the, the, the Flash movie. Bunch of goofsters. Bunch of goofsters. Uh, did you see the Dead by Daylight added? Nick Cage. I did see Dead by Daylight added Nick Cage. I thought that was the fun. And, and, and so anyone who doesn't know about this, Nick, Dead by Daylight is a asymmetrical multiplayer online horror game where one player is playing a killer and they have like basically every single uh, horror killer that has ever existed is a playable character as a villain in that game. I don't think they have anyone omitted. I think everything, I think everyone is there. Like Michael Myers, Freddy, Jason, Chucky. Yeah, they they leased everybody. Oh, you know what? No, there is no Jason. Jason's specifically oh. not there because they made the Friday the 13th game. So they wouldn't license them Jasons but Dead by Daylight. Oh, okay. Uh, um, which is funny because the Friday the 13th game is a ripoff of Dead by Daylight where you can only use Jason as the killer. Um, so, but anyway, it's got everyone else. I mean, and it's got tons. It's got characters from Silent Hill, uh, Resident Evil enemies, but and then there's survivors, and the survivors are the same. There's like one of the survivors is the dude from Left 4 Dead. Um, there's like Nancy from uh, Nightmare. On Nightmare. Um, you've got uh, but yeah, like tons of protagonists from horror films, horror content. And then there's original characters for the game as well, original for the game. But they recently added a new survivor, Nick Cage, but. It's not Nick Cage playing a character. It's literally Nick Cage. Like when you select him, it goes Nicholas Cage. And it's like Nick it's Cage it's, from Unbearable Weight of Talent. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And and he has so, he has hilarious dialogue. Some specific dialogue with the killer. So like the ring girl Sadako, she's one of the killers. And he, and if he sees her, he's like, oh god, it's Sadako. We gotta get out of here. <laughs> so it's so funny listening to Nick Cage like yell about specific like horror characters. Uh, highly recommend it. I mean, the game's kind of like i don't know it's rough it's an online multiplayer game so it's really hard for me to recommend but i definitely at least recommend at least watching uh some content of it because it's it's entertaining yeah it's kind of like um i don't i don't want to say like vermintide because that's that's left for dead yeah right but it's it's got that feel to it well let's uh we can talk about a little bit about video gaming because they did announce uh some some warhammer stuff video games oh some new warhammer announcements nah, I, yeah I, there's the i'm learning well, here let's go well realms of ruin is going to be the first rts age of sigmar game um looks interesting i i think you would probably find it more interesting than i would yeah i'm, I'm actually super excited about the game for a couple of reasons uh but one of the biggest ones is it is going to be cross-platform um with with consoles and PC. yeah and also they said it's going to be optimized for controller so mm. I'm very interested about that part. I'd I mean, be interested in that too, because I prefer controller to keyboard. And I know I'm, but whatever. I'm 42 and I barely play video games. Uh, I I like controller a lot as well. I I'm I'm a swappy. I'm a swap guy. I like I like to do like like oh for this for this game I like keyboard and mouse for this game I like controller. Like I'm I'm all over the place. Um, I, I usually try to I usually try to align with whatever I think the devs' vision of what the players should be using is. So like. Yeah. For example, Armored Core 6 just came out, huge game. Um, you should use a controller. Like, I, I don't care if you think you're the, the most god mouse and keyboard controller ever. Like, that game is is designed top to bottom for controller use. So, like, yep. it's playable with a mouse and keyboard, but you, you will lose to someone using a controller. Like, that's, like I mean, if it doesn't have a versus, but, this, you know, the idea is, like, they expect you to use a controller for that game. Well, speaking of using a controller, uh, Dark Tide is coming out on Xbox. Oh, that'll be and, nice. And that's so that's going to have controller optimization. Yeah, uh, I used controller when I played it on PC. It was fine. You don't need precise aim in that game. Oh, so. no. Yeah. Well, and they're doing the new Vermintide expansion. So the the Bright Wizard is now going to get to use uh, is now gets to be a necromancer, which is OK, whatever. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's like the it's like the 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 one Imperial, not Imperial Guardsman, like the the fucking foot soldier guy who becomes a bretonian knight you're like okay well whatever <laughs> sure um then uh they did some they talked about uh space Marine 2 they showed some more stuff but i don't think we have a release date yet yeah i'm i'm fucking i'm i'm very excited about uh i uh, i'm super space excited Marine about 2. space <laughs> Marine 2 i can't wait to play space Marine 2 i haven't played yeah. a video game steve since like a year and a half like since i actually like picking up a specific video game to play yes. and 
I, I'm kind so of saving cool. myself for Space Marine. Oh man, Space Marine 2 looks so cool. <laughs> yeah. The um and oh oh, you want to talk about delayed release? So there's been a rumbling online about uh Epic. The 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 new Epic game. Mm-hmm. There's a uh, people are like they've been previewing this for a while now and we still haven't got a release date yet on it. So they're kind of wondering what the fuck is going on with it. They they pro- they're probably waiting until they get some sort of confirmation from uh like a uh, logistics. China. <laughs> yeah, I mean logistics. So yeah, China China's going to be involved. Yeah, I mean they've been previewing it for like over like 2 months at this point, which is incredibly long mm. for uh, a preview cycle for for GW. Um, I thought for sure they were going to announce it as mid-September, but you're probably right. There probably is some kind of delay in the actual production line. It's, 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 that's like pe- people are like, I mean, yeah, I know everyone's pretending that COVID never happened and is not a thing that's real and still, you know, never existed uh, and is not still a thing. I know everyone is really, really keen to to have that be the reality, but um, the actual reality is uh, the shipping crisis is still very real. There's still a lot of people getting very sick. Uh, and it shuts shit down. And on top of that, um, specific this one specifically for uh, North America, um, but a huge LTL, like a hundred year old company, uh, Yellow Freight, uh, went bankrupt recently. Uh, uh, they like, didn't go bankrupt. They were forced, and they they're basically their top investors, and everyone just gutted the company. <laughs> uh, well, they declared bankruptcy. They, they declared I mean, the, bankruptcy. the company is gone. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously, we know that a company that lasted a hundred years declaring bankruptcy likely was some fucking rich guy making a fucking shit ton of money while fucking over every employee. Like, yes, yes. obviously that's the case. Sorry, I don't want to. I don't want it to act like <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to uh, paint it as if like, oh, this poor company went out of business because of the market. No, it was they. They, they got looted. Yes, you are correct. Um, but anyway, so yeah, this company existed for a hundred years, Freightliner, but they were big and they're gone they, because you know uh, because of said looting. Yeah, um, and I think they got like something like seven hundred million in TPT loans. TPP yeah. loans. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, it's a grift. It just disappeared. It's totally a grift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, so that company's gone now. So all those dudes lost their jobs. All the truckers lost their jobs. So on and so forth. Uh, the only people who made money are the you know the rich CEOs as, as per usual. But um, the other thing is the strain that that has put on the other ltl companies is like unbearable like they cannot keep up with it so now we're back to another shipping, shipping crisis, crisis yeah because there's now a massive amount of com- and that's the thing too is like all this stuff is exponential because like like i try i i because what i had a i had a dude like super pissed at me about a while back about like you know something like a, a delay like what the delay like it, you know it's like oh this was the, this this thing's arrival was delayed by three days like the, to the shipping container was delayed by three days so he's like okay so it's gonna be three days late and i'm like no it's not gonna be three days late like, <laughs> i mean it's not gonna be three days late i'm like okay so i had to explain to him that like like that kind of delay like it's like okay this is this is gonna take three days later to go to the port okay well because that's happening there's now there's now a bunch of stuff that's going in front of them and then it just creates this crazy jam where the the actual like how long the product's delayed like goes like it's multiplicative so it's like oh it took three days later to get to the port okay that means it's going to be like a month late to actually arrive to the market yes because everything else has got to get shifted up and it's got to find a a slot to go into yes exactly and and then what happens is and then because that comes in then that creates another delay then that creates another delay blah, blah, blah. and so like there's they can catch up but it takes forever yeah, it takes months. It takes weeks. Yeah, m- weeks, months. Like that. That's the thing. So if people understand, like these, the, like that. Um, what was it? The the ever the ever uh, that ship that that big ship. The oh yeah, the evergreen. The evergreen. Yeah, like the evergreen that was delayed for like what a week. Something like that. Yeah. I guarantee you, there's stuff that's. There, I guarantee you, there's stuff that took eight months to get out of that. <laughs> uh. At that level because that that level of delay is insane oh yeah i don't doubt it don't doubt it at all yeah so like you know that that's that's the simple fact is that so yeah there there's a lot going on <laughs> yeah so so those who are aching for their warhammer the horus heresy in legions imperialis are gonna have to wait a little bit longer i was i was thinking that it was going to get released early september because that's generally when this stuff happens mm-hmm. but it uh did not it has not <laughs> oh, you know, it, the, I mean, we're, I hopefully, hopefully they're planning for the worst case scenario. It's the Christmas release. Could be, you know, that, that'd, be a, that'd be a solid Christmas release. 
I mean, it would be. It would be a solid Christmas release, but we'll see. We'll see yeah. on that end. I think the, actually, I think that game will be pretty – I think that will be a pretty fun box game, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm actually going to – um dump a bunch of my epic stuff at auction this year i'm Ooh, gonna nice. get rid of some of my old uh my old old uh, uh epic stuff that should get you uh peak value at this point because the interest is going to be maxed yeah uh, well and it's but it's a smaller scale and uh it's uh, i've been looking to oh downsize. is it not is, is epic not on the same scale as the new epic no <laughs> at legion imperialis is um uh i th- i want to say uh, bigger that's great eight, eight millimeter and epic is six millimeter oh uh, that's awesome <laughs> yes so uh, it's those cheeky those cheeky brits so you might be saying like oh that's not that much different it's a huge difference yeah, it's a massive difference that, that will look like they're from different games <laughs> they are completely different i mean you could technically if you base everything the same it'll be fine because it's just if it's based on base mm-hmm. and you want to play by the new rules based, you could do that based on what <laughs> yeah and, you know, a lot of Grognar gamers are like, I'm not buying this game. I have a bunch of Epic at home. Maybe I might get the rules to try it out. Ugh. God, I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate people like that. Just try the new rules. It's probably better than what you you had. And there's a reason why no one's playing your game of Epic with you right now. Uh, yeah. yeah exactly. well, I mean, like, let, let, let's. Let's. I mean, let's let's cut it to brass tacks. The vast majority of people don't 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 play any of these games. No, no. We all we all like to buy and collect and paint and pretend we play these games. It's just something. Bitching about this game is something we do as we're waiting for our shipment of brass colon Birmingham coming to our house. (laughs) That's right. Yeah. Bitching bitching about the hobby is like a huge percentage of the hobby. (laughs) Yeah. Bitch. It's it's got to be at least seventy ninety percent of the hobby. Bitch about the hobby. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> All right. Um. Anything else gaming wise? Try to think. Uh, nah, bro. I got nothing. nah, bro. Um. One. One. One thing I do wanna. I did wanna say to you is. Uh. So this Halloween. This we're now that we're in the spooky season. Mm-hmm. Uh. I'm one of my things that I'm doing this year is I'm trying to watch as many Lovecraft movies as I can. Oh, nice. So movies they actually just dropped a triple feature on Shutter. They did well. I mean, from Beyond and Reanimator, I've seen like a thousand. Oh, movies. it was. I, I didn't see. I didn't see what movies there were. I didn't know they were. So right movies. now on on Shutter, they have, uh, from Beyond. They oh they have Dagon, which I watched. And I was Dagon. I was commenting about Dagon. Holy shit, that movie's way better than I remember it being. <laughs> I love that movie. With the, I I just remember hating it when I saw it the first time, and now watching it a second time, I'm like, I love this movie. Yeah, I love the movie too. <laughs> they have the Dunnish Horror, with the one with uh, Al from Quantum Leap, which is a fun movie to watch. It's also got um Sandra D, you know mm-hmm. the the classic Sandra D. It's a fun watch movie. But the fourth hidden movie is The Haunted Place, which you would actually really like. I should watch that because I've never seen The Haunted Place. So The Haunted Place is um, what's so that's face? on Shutter? Yes, it's it's got um, Vincent Price in it. Oh shit! Fuck yeah, I'm already in. And oh. it's based off of um, uh, what's the fucking story? The one with the guy whose like ancestor possesses his body. Why can't I think of the name of it? Um, oh fuck! I it's can't the one you either. really like too. Oh, pick, no, not Pickman's model. Uh. No, no, no. Uh, fuck. There's people screaming at us right now. Yeah, there's definitely like, you guys are supposed to know Lovecraft. Uh, Charles Dexter Ward. Charles Dexter Ward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Charles Dexter Ward. Jesus. <laughs> so, so this was actually really funny. When I watched it, I was like, because I was like, oh, a fun, like, I never, I haven't seen this Vincent Price movie before. I'm going to watch it. And then I was watching it. And I'm like, this is Charles Dexter Ward. And it's all like got these Lovecraft names to everything like this. Mm-hmm. So I looked it up and it's actually the first movie that's actually based off of H.P. Lovecraft oh dope it was given it was done at the same time as all of the edgar Allan poe movies were making money by roger corman so roger corman was like i'm gonna write i'm gonna do a lovecraft book but they were like we can't call it lovecraft because no one knows who lovecraft is so we're gonna put edgar Allan poe on there so it's listed as edgar Allan poe's the haunted place but edgar Allan poe didn't do shit it's all lovecraft it's also got lon cheney jr in it Cheney Jr. is pretty cool. I'm in. <laughs> yeah. So I watched I watched that. I watched um the Die Monster Die. I watched sh- uh the Shuttered Room and I watched the Crimson Cult. 
Um, those are like the first four. Crimson Colt is so bad, but you might actually like it. <laughs> All right, I'll check it. I'll check it out. So Crimson Colt is like, do you remember Layer of the White Worm? I do remember Layer of the White Worm. Yes. I remember. I remember being so excited about the movie because I thought it was going to have a lot of sex in it, uh, it and, and, uh, and it does not. <laughs> it has some sex in it, and it's got weird Hugh Grant. Yes, a very weird Hugh Grant. Yes, but Crimson Colt is um, uh, got Christopher Lee, Boris Karloff, and Michael Gao, who played Alfred in the Batman movies, hmm. uh, and Barbara Steele too. If you know who Barbara Steele is, I do not. But know it's, who Barbara Steele is. It's not very good, but also at the same time. I give it a pass because it's kind of fun in an old fashioned kind of way. A little boring, not but not terrible. Um, it's it seems more like a movie of the week for TV than anything. So I I recommend it. It's on uh, it's on Tubi. So to be sweet. Yes. So those my my most of my um, horror movie watching has been incredibly old movies and The Relic. I also watched that. <laughs> I remember I remember watching The Relic in the 90s and thinking it was OK. Well, so I recently on Tarantino's podcast, they talked about the relic being this hidden gem of a 90s movie. And I watched it because I was like, you know, this movie takes place in Chicago. It takes place at the Field Museum. I'm going to watch it because this will be fun to watch, you know, the Field Museum. So I'm watching it and I'm like, this movie was obviously not designed to be Chicago. This is like designed to be a New York movie. Like everyone has a New York accent in this movie. <laughs> right. right. Like, yeah, I'm in, I'm in Chicago right now, but it's like, I, I don't know if I could do a New York with talking about Chicago. Hey, go back to Chicago, something like that. I don't know. But yeah, they're, but it, it's a fun movie. It's It has no right to be as fun of a movie as it is. It's really well written, too, because, you know, they they set up everything in the beginning and it, it pays off in the end. It works. It works. Oh, and also, I, I, someone. Uh, this is not my joke. Someone stole it, uh, but uh Someone pointed out that Bob Barker uh, went as close as possible to without going over a dollar. Yep. What a absolutely. God. What a fucking god. <laughs> truly was. He like truly like no was. like no joke. Like that's actually that's actually like that's incredible. Actually, <laughs> for our for for our foreign listeners, one of the things one of the games you would play to get into the showcase showdown is you have to spin a giant wheel, and the giant wheel had a bunch of numbers on it that are pennies on it, like mm. a, a cent worth a cent so it'd be like 30 cents 35 cents 90 cents and you'd get as many spins as you could to go as close to a dollar, dollar. as you could without going over yeah, you don't want to go over so you get you had to spin and get the equivalency of un, of 99 without going to 100 and that's what bob barker did because yeah, he died, died at 99 what a fucking legend <laughs> he was also a, a animal rights activist and also want to make sure he spayed and neutered your pets that's right from from what i i mean i i don't I, you know I, I i've said it before and i'll say it again and you know i do not i do not condone hero worship celebrities are regular people so you should not think that they're amazing or anything just because that they're famous someone you know however from what i have heard bob barker really good guy did they get in trouble for ass grabbing though uh no that was the um uh shit, shit, shit. that was uh the family feud guy oh was not, it I'm... not not steve harvey the uh the old white family feud guy no, yeah, the old, well, get serious grabby hands. Well, yeah, but that was like 60s and everyone had grabby hands in the 60s. I I'm mean, talking like re I'm talking like Barb Barker got in trouble like when you're at the point where you should have known better. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 you might be right. And that's and that is exactly why I prefaced what I said. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't we you know, what whatever. It's, he was a he was a guy that helped raise us and then the. Uh, <laughs> you know, in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I looked at it real quick. Apparently in 94, uh, uh, one of the Price is Rights models uh, sued him over a sexual assault. He denied the allegations that they had a consensual relationship. So I don't know, but uh, that, yeah. is, but that, was, that was in 1994. So yes, uh, very well might, might be true. Uh, and if, if it is true, fuck you, Bob Barker. If it's not true, uh, you know, like I said, I've heard Bob Barker, good guy. <laughs> <laughs> and again that's what it's why i don't that's why i try, do my best to try and not get twisted up in the fucking world of celebrities man like don't it, it you're gonna drive yourself crazy like none of these people are heroes you can enjoy you can enjoy what they make but don't like it, it's it it's it i mean as someone who's a big fan of vtubers like i i understand like how the parasocial dynamic works and you can be parasocial with, like i mean fuck the entire entertainment industry is literally parasocial like that's the entire point of it but like um you know just just step back for a second you know like like just 
it, take a take everyone with a grain of salt, please. Yeah, <laughs> like everyone, just please, just take them with a grain of salt. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I, I you know, I, I think I like most. It was it was like a '90s thing, and and it's like oh, you know, it's like if you looked at any single human being from the 1990s, they were all doing atrocious things. Some worse than others. It's all just a gradient. No right. one is, is perfect. And then no and one is and. And, and well, today, no one is perfect. Let's just say that. Yeah, and and today's nothing is tomorrow's crime as well. Like that's another thing that matters too. Yeah, um, I mean it's and it's, and, and, and that's not an excuse for saying that something is right. Like if something yeah. becomes a crime, it probably always should have been. But like, yeah, I, I just I I do want to like point that out. Like like you know the the expected social contract does get updated. <laughs> yeah, the social contract has been updated. I think that's <laughs> that's actually a pretty good um. That's a pretty good saying there, and yeah. I think I'm I'm glad you coined that. The yeah, social the, contract has been updated. The social contract has been updated. Uh, yeah. So yeah, so that's as simple as that. Yeah, I I, I think it's it's like I mean yeah, I'm sure I'm, I'm sure you. like in like yeah. what like the 20s or 30s like grabbing your secretary's ass was like a thing, and like it's not right. No, it, but but like I'm sure that was just like oh boss he he you know what I mean? Oh yeah, that's yeah. It oh. it was yeah. It's it's one of those things where it's like. Now this is this shouldn't have never have been right. Right, it should not have that. It, it was a thing that was right at a time, but it it was not intrinsically right. Like it should not have been something that he was doing. So that's what I mean. That's that's, that's what I'm saying. All right. So everyone, go to the Game Classy Facebook page. It's the best way to get the link to our Game Classy Discord. Where <laughs> Which we're is the actually best way at- to talk to us. <laughs> Um, yeah, just because we don't put out the link everywhere, it's just usually yeah. on the Facebook. Um, and, and keep in mind, the, the funny part about all of this is it's because Facebook, it, it is so hard to interact with you guys on Facebook. Like, it really is. It's actually difficult. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's why we, we go to the Discord. Um, sorry, I haven't been as active because I just I started work up again. So it's been a little a little hectic on my end. I haven't been able to put in my pithy comments <laughs> um, about TJ Hooker. Oh, that was that was a good one. That was a good that was a good point. But I, I never seen TJ Hooker, so it wasn't my mind. But the, the one that really like the one that really bodied me was the fucking Twilight Zone. The one I was like, fuck. Yes. <laughs> I actually like I I audibly did the thing where you say fuck and look away. <laughs> I did that. Well, he was also in that movie with Ernest Borgnine that they featured on Joe Bob this year. Too. Borgnine. <laughs> yes. Don't worry, kids. I've got my trusty pocket knife. <laughs> I stole it off that Borgnine guy. <laughs> You might remember me as Sergeant Fatso Jetson from from Fury to Eternity. <laughs> uh, yes. So yeah, go to our so go to our Discord. Uh, if you want to see more of my stuff, you can actually see me on Instagram at Game Classy Joe. I actually just finished off two Sons of Horus party buses that I'll be posting this week, as well as my finished like display for my Todd Stashwick autograph that I just got. So they got over I, the I, summer. I I plan on doing a whole lot of hobbying over the winter. So that's a uh that's like that's my that's my that's my goal my goal my goal for this year is during the winter to do like some serious fucking hobby yeah i gotta i gotta finish up my adepticon team tournament army and i gotta finish my uh i, I gotta finish some D D terrain because we got a game on the 23rd and so i want to make sure everything's painted and looks pretty for the actual event nice that'll be fun so like let me ask you a question steve i know that it, i probably already know the answer to this but if you had the option of a D game where it was like you meet regularly, like let's say like once a month, mm-hmm. and you know it's like it's just like a standard tabletop. There's nothing fancy, and it's all word. Or if you came like once every two months, and it was like a beautiful board. I mean, granted, it's not a super useful thing, but it just looks gorgeous, and you get to play with it, and you get to kind of immerse yourself in that world. Um, Which one would you prefer? I mean, I would, I wouldn't mind the, inf- I wouldn't mind the infrequent. Uh, infrequent high production one. I think that's. I think that sounds fun. Yeah, I'm. I'm that's g- kind of what I'm feeling with is like. Yeah, I want to be DM, but I also want to make it fun for me as a DM. So I want to have all this fun stuff to play in. I want to yeah, play like, in my world. I, I like honestly. I think a lot of the. So I've been. I mean, you know, I'm a huge fucking weeb. Obviously, everyone knows this. But like, one of the things that's actually gotten me really. Um, I don't know about inspired is if the right term, but one of the things I really am I'm a fan of the style of play is how Japanese people play TTRPGs. So like in Japan, like having people like come over to your house and like play a TTRPG, it's not unheard of, but it's like rare. Like it's not like a that that's like a, that's that would be unusual. Like you'd have like that would be something that would be like really close friends or not common. Which and I would say that that's probably the most common way that rpgs are played in the states like it's friends coming over to an apartment and everyone's playing together for hours and everywhere um the way the majority of japanese ttrpgs are played are at game stores in little like 
kind of like cubicle booths like you rent like a cubicle booth with your group and uh you run basically like if not necessarily one shots you run like tight uh stories and and obviously the most the most popular rpg in japan is call of cthulhu um so what it'll be is like your one session will be you know i don't know fuck it, you're doing the lovecraft town of the baskervilles right and like you're just doing a quick you're just doing a quick story and like the, it's more about um telling the con the the con the concise story and getting all the players to you know participate use their cast to go through uh and and complete the adventure and then you know maybe your next adventure if anyone survives they can you know maybe maybe their character can come back for the next one because you know you, you know shared world uh and if anyone dies you know they just do a new new character I, they don't do the which I feel is more popular in the West is like the sprawling, like we've been playing the same D and D campaign for eight years with the same characters, uh, kind of thing. Like, I, I don't like that style of play, Like that's not what I'm, what I personally like. Um, and I think the Japanese style is like what I would, what I would focus on making my own. That's how I want to make my own games. I want to make my own games more like that. I want it to be more like, a like, quicker maybe not quicker but like more complete adventures like i want to run a more board campaign and like i'll just i'm I, like i'm running it for a month like or you know like four sessions like period like this game is going to go for four sessions yeah which is kind of what i'm doing right now but you brought up an interesting point and something i wanted to comment on since call of cthulhu is the most important I mean, is the most popular rpg in japan most important uh most most popular Western RPG in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that the Japanese people, while playing it, attempt to do Boston accents? <laughs> uh, I don't even know how to like imitate uh, this without sounding incredibly racist, they, so I'm not going they, to do it. They don't, but I, my guess, they might do like a Kansai dialect if they know, like if they know. So, so, so Japan, like everywhere else, you know, there's dialects and like and accents and different words and stuff. So. That's why if you if, if you've ever watched an anime uh, with an English dub and there's a character who inexplicably has a southern accent, that's not inexplicable. What that is is that's someone who is speaking in a different dialect from Japan. So yeah. they might do something like that because you know because if you want you know if you want to play you know I'm from Brooklyn you know when you're playing if you're one of those guys who does like the you know the silly voice like yeah you know my this character's from Brooklyn I would imagine that a Japanese person yeah. could do the same thing but they would just choose one of their dialects to be like a one to one just like we do mm. when we dub english we give them a southern accent so they don't they're they're not like in the middle of it and they're just they just go oh my god a horror <laughs> from beyond my imagination <laughs> my imagination oh man that's that's fucking hilarious Quick, I don't, I don't, get in the car we got to get away from here we get in the car <laughs> get in the car we're going to donkeys, <laughs> going to um, donkeys. <laughs> yes, i don't know if we have any boston listeners I, we probably do not i don't know if we do hello i like your baked beans yes um <laughs> all right uh so yes go to the game let's see uh where were they at? oh steve is not available anywhere else aside from the discord and actually that's Maybe. the best place to get a hold of steve yeah if you want to talk to me just hit me up on discord it's the one place where he can threaten the rich without getting kicked off the platform fucking finally jeez. actually uh tumblr as well i you, you can say whatever the fuck you want on tumblr which is actually kind of which is kind of insane yeah, and Tumblr allows nudie pics again. Uh, yeah, I, but I, and when I say anything, like, dude, I have seen, like, legit, like, you could get jailed for this kind of threat. And it's just, like, <laughs> fucking three years old up on Tumblr. <laughs> like, damn. Go. Yeah, yeah, no joke. Like, Tumblr, Tumblr is the fucking Wild West. All right, so, Steve, until next cast. Uh, seriously, check out Tumblr. It's really underrated. It's great. Game Classic.